I know you're gonna dig this. Okay, we were gonna take the truck. We're at home right now. We we're gonna take the truck to go get some fuel and uh, went ahead and started it up to fill up the airbags, whatever, and doing a pre trip. And I noticed there was a puddle underneath the engine compartment and it's coolant. And uh, Cinnamon said there's a light that came on on the gauges and uh, it doesn't look good, but that was just within like a couple minutes of idling. It should not be hot at all. It takes these engines a long time to warm up. Uh, the generator, the APU has been running all weekend and um, I'm pretty sure it uses the same coolant. So we're going to go ahead. We just checked here. The hood's up. We just checked to see. You know, we checked the oil. Oil looks fine. Um, the the coolant, truck turned itself off. Yeah, the truck turned itself off. So, and it looks like there's some dark spots in the coolant thing or whatever, the container. And so we're going to go over and we're going to check the APU. We're going to check the oil to see if it's like chocolate milk or if it's a normal oil color. But I have a feeling that this whole situation is caused by the APU and I'm hopeful it's because of the APU because that's ten thousand dollars and this could be like I don't know fifty seventy five thousand dollars or something crazy like that so we can go without an APU we don't want to could we don't want to go without an engine so we're gonna go ahead and check that out the cap off and some of the foamy crap came out and you can see there's like some dark areas in here which is really weird and then it's really wet on the ground and there's some foam on the ground right there This thing already leaks oil, so I expect that. It is super windy out. It's okay. And the oil is low, but that's normal with this thing because it leaks oil, but the it's uh, the right color, so. It's the color of oil. There's no chocolate milk. So I, I don't know. It's kind of concerning. I'm going to go ahead and take off this bottom piece anyways. I don't think we're going to see anything. We spent I don't know, a couple thousand dollars trying to get this oil, this oil leak problem fixed. And uh, we've taken it to two different carriers and neither one of them can figure it out. So we just stopped doing that. We just add oil every so often. Yeah, this just looks like oil. I'm not seeing any signs of uh, antifreeze. Eric's behind me. We're gonna head out. 
going to Stoops in Lima uh, to drop off the truck. Uh, they're actually open. It's President's Day. Is it President's Day? I want to it's February. He said it was President's Day. I thought that was... Oh, no. I'm thinking of Columbus Day. That's in, like, October. Okay. Um, anyways, we're going to drop off the truck and... They're gonna do a coolant flush. We're gonna ask for a coolant flush. Um, get a new reservoir. That's a hard word for me to say. <laughs> I hate that word, it's weird. Um, for the coolant and then um, we're also, we, we're hearing like a, you know, and uh, we, we followed it to uh, one of the airbags that's underneath the sleeper, which is leaking. So we're gonna have that fixed. So I'm hoping that, um, hold on, I gotta get off. Um, I'm hoping that we can, uh, or they can fix it fast because they charge like $200 an hour for repairs. Um, but I'm hoping that they can fix it, uh, because, uh, well, we need to get going. We need to make some money, <laughs> be able to pay our bills and everything. Uh, so yeah, I'm just hoping that he doesn't break down on the way. Um, the truck kept turning itself off and so he'd add more uh, like it bubble over and he'd add more coolant and stuff and then um, and then keep going and or, or and then turn it on again and so he's all the way back there I hope it didn't turn off already we're out in the country I'm actually stopping Duncan. Terry. <laughs> Don't worry, he's not gonna leave it there. <laughs> no. stop at a rest area and if there's one available before we get to the freight liner we'll uh, do this again. Based on what we had talked about previously, what was approved, I got this figure as close as I could to that previously discussed number. Okay. okay. Um, so what's the final? Total on that is seventeen seventy-five twenty-one. Okay. Well, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, I Did appreciate that. Sixty something. What are we doing, Derek? Picking up the dang truck, Simon. <laughs> Breaking up the dang truck. Uh, we had to have a TCU preventative maintenance checklist uh, done. It's something that you have to do every now and then uh, for requirements for our carrier, uh, just to make sure that your everything's in order. Um, was everything in order, Cinnamon? Everything was in order. That's good. How, so, much, how much that rack truck could travel? Three hundred fourteen dollars. Um, Fun. Yeah. So they. That's our truck right there, by the way. Yeah, yeah. they charge a hundred and. 
8.65, I think they said an hour, and it took an hour and a half for them to do all the checks, not to change anything. Um, so. <laughs> Sorry, I just hate spending money at all, I guess. It's not fun, it's not fun. So, as you've seen earlier, we're having problems with the APU, it was foaming up the coolant or whatever, and it pushed out coolant, and uh, we were able to get that, well, we added more coolant in the truck, we took it out to Freightliner, and we had them flush out the coolant system, and we had them, um, you know, put in new coolant, and then we had them change out the coolant reservoir, because it was really old, you know, and over time, you know the truck runs about 200 to 200 degrees fahrenheit you know and then if you're going uphill it's really bad and and then in the winter time you know you might have the truck parked and it's the negatives you know what i mean so it's a real drastic uh temperature change and so since the truck's like i don't know what is it seven years old now we decided to go ahead and get you know a new reservoir because those things deteriorate over time so we just had that done uh, we got this done. It's just like there's always little things that's like making us have downtime You're gonna run into that it doesn't matter if you have a perfectly brand new truck Everything is gonna have issues one way or another some sometimes we hear stories of people having problems with their Brand new reefer unit before they even take their first load and it that's pretty sad But it just kind of hurts because we spent over 2,000 this week without even being at work too like so not bringing in any money and then also mm -hmm. spending that so it hurts <laughs> and what do i like to say cinnamon whenever we spend money like that it's a drop in the bucket and it's it's sad because it's true know, because this, this truck there's a lot of trucks that gross more there's some trucks that gross less but this truck gross around it was just under two hundred eighty thousand last year and so this expense is technically a drop in the bucket but it hurts nonetheless. It I'll, sucks. I'll never get out of that mentality because my parents had all six of us in eight years and my mom was a home, stay at home mom. So we lived off one income and we couponed and stuff. So mm -hmm. like spending any kind of money. And, and I don't now, get. <laughs> so we still have the, we're dealing with the, the question of what are we going to do with the APU because it has 16,000 hours on it. You know, a brand new one costs $10,000. Uh, uh, this carrier wanted um thirty nine hundred dollars just in labor to uh take apart the old one and put it back together and uh then we priced you know, our friends uh, suggested this uh, apu center in missouri uh, we called them up to see if they had a used uh carrier comfort pro apu and they said they did and to buy a used one have this one taken off and have the used one put on that was rebuilt they they wanted around seventy five hundred dollars for that. So right now we're looking at ELW uh, south of Columbus here. Um, as of right now, we've heard great things about this place, not just for APUs but for wiring, all kinds of different things. It seems like that's the place to go. It's a we've heard this name pop up from other fleet owners, other drivers, and uh, we're gonna have them just take the head off the APU, check out the gasket. We, They might send the head to be pressure ch uh, checked, pressure tested to make sure that- uh, It's working good. It, yeah. Everything's fine and not warped or cracked or whatever. And uh, at that point, if everything looks good, it's just like a bad gasket or whatever, because that's what it sounds like that caused the foaming of the coolant. If it's just that, we might have them go ahead and rebuild the APU. I don't know yet. We'll just cross that bridge, you know, once we get there. Hopefully, it's just a bad gasket. That's why I'm hopeful. So, we'll see. But that's where we're at right now. That's our latest adventures in this journey. Yay! Um, <laughs> we talked to uh, just a couple people. I haven't really tried to sell this truck. There's one friend that, you know, posted on Facebook, put the word out. And uh, I did want $45,000 for this truck, but lately I'm like, you know what, Cinnamon? We want to transition to something else potentially, you know? Um, we love driving, but there's a lot of things that, you know, aren't too fun about it. You know, we do want home time. We miss the family life, you know, spending time with family and friends. And uh, Cinnamon loves her garden. Mm-hmm. 
So I, we miss the home life, Cinnamon misses her garden, and so we're going to, you know, and we're looking into another business, you know. We can't, we don't see ourselves expanding and uh, trucking, so we're, we're looking at all the options. And one of them is selling this pickup truck. I'd love to keep it just because it's set up to last longer than what it was, and it's got a brand new rebuilt transmission. Things really stout, um, but yeah. We're, we, I priced it to sell a couple people I know. I, I told them, I said thirty five thousand. That's it. You know, firm. That'd be the lowest. That yeah. would be the lowest. You know, so I just want to. You know, we borrowed against this truck just to get the transmission rebuilt, and we did some other things to make it last a little bit longer. And uh, we'll pay off that loan, and then we'll use the rest probably to. Uh, work on a couple other cars to make them road worthy and then uh, put the rest towards debt. So that way we are we lower our monthly bills and whatnot. So yeah, that's all right. So that's, that's what we're looking at right now is just spending money and some downtime. While we have this downtime, we're actually networking with people for our other business. I think we told them, but we have another business just in case you haven't caught a live stream. We, we have a second business We'll tell you about that one of these days, but yep, we're in the mix of that. Whenever we have downtime, we uh, work on that. So it's not that we're not doing anything. We're we're busy, and uh, we've been kind of dealing with this for a month or two now, something like that. I don't know. Anyways, that's all we got going on. We appreciate you guys following our journey. I got a feeling we're always going to be on the road and traveling, but uh, thank you for hanging out. God bless you guys, and we'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs> if you are interested in doing what we do and driving one of these trucks for a living, reach out to Highfield Trucking.